Welcome, everyone. It's 11 o'clock, and uh, I officially call this meeting to order. If you will call, call the roll, please, Tara. Mr. Coburn. Coburn here. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley here. Mr. Shannon. Here. Mr. Fry Miller. Mr. McCown. Mr. Dyson. Dyson here. Mr. Alexander. Alexander here. Mr. LaForge. LaForge here. Mr. Peterson. All right. Before we get started, we have some, uh, some guests in the room. I would like to recognize Representative Lonnie Sims, Representative uh, Denise Crosswhite Hader. Thank you both for coming. Former Secretary of Trans Transportation Mike Patterson, and from AGC, Bobby Stim. Thank you all very, very much. All right. So we need to. Um, Try not to mess this up this morning. Talk about the consent docket. The consent docket contains uh, items 135 and 136. These items were discussed in detail earlier in our subcommittee meetings. If any commissioner at this time would like to pull an individual item, he may do so. Otherwise, I'd hear a motion of approval for the consent docket. The forge move for approval. Okay. You make Before we vote on this. Can yeah. we do the minutes? Absolutely. Of the last I'm sorry. I missed that. We need uh, so we need to have an approval so of the moved. so moved for the minutes from September 7th. Do we have a second? Seconds. All in favor? Call the roll, please. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Mr. Frymiller. Mr. McCown. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? All right. Thank you very much. And now back to the consent docket. We have, uh, I need a motion to approve the consent LaForge, docket. move for approval. Okay. Second. And second. Please call the roll. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Frymiller? Mr. McCown? Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Thank you. Item number 135, programming of uh, Federal Railroad Crossing Safety Funds, Mr. Swenson. Mr. Chairman, this yep. is Ms. Tegler for the yep. uh, engineering. Uh, everything on 135 was on the it was on the docket. consent docket so okay. we're just going to be talking about 137 next okay item okay. number 137 Mr. All right, thank you good morning mr chairman members of the commission item 137 i have two engineering contracts this month part a is a statewide all districts are on demand geotech geotechnical investigations the department has selected eight firms to provide this service uh, this is with burgess engineering and testing est Kleinfelder, Midwest Engineering and Testing, Olson, Professional Service Industries, Standard Testing and Engineering, and Terracon Consultants. The aggregate not to exceed amount for these eight contracts is $2 million. Part B, McCurtain County and District 2. Department has selected Friesen Nichols to provide engineering, preliminary engineering and construction plans for US 259. The total not to exceed amount is $704,800. Project uh, 04 and 07 are included in the eight-year construction work plan with a scheduled let date of 2022 and 2024. Uh, project's uh, estimate is $23,400,000. Approval is recommended. I'll try to take any questions if you have any this morning. All right, commissioners, you've heard uh, the presentation. Do I have a motion to approve item number 137? So moved, Grimsley. Do I have a second? Coburn, second. All right. Call the roll, please. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Fry Miller? Mr. McCown? Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? All right, thank you, Mr. Tegler. 138? Okay. Thank you. Item 138 are my engineering supplements. I have two of those as well this month. Part A is Oklahoma County and District 4. The department previously authorized Poe and Associates to provide preliminary engineering and final design plans for I-40. 
Supplement not to exceed amount is $118,995. The project is in the eight-year construction work plan and scheduled let date of 2024. Part B in Oklahoma County and District 4 as well. The department had previously authorized Poe and Associates to perform engineering and final design plans for I-40. This project has uh, three locations at MacArthur, Meridian, and Portland Avenue. These are all bridge and approaches. The supplement not to exceed amount is $1,170,062. These three projects are in the eight-year construction work plan with schedule let date of 2024 and 2027. This project is related uh, with Portland Avenue, so I just wanted to let everybody know that. So approval is recommended. I'll take any questions if you have any this morning. All right. You've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion to approve uh, item number 138? So moved, Grimsley. Do you have a second? Second. Coburn. All right. Please call the roll. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Frymiller? Mr. McCown? Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? All right. Thank you, thank, Commissioner. Thank you very much. All right, item number 139 is the, are the change orders with a cumulative total of $75,000 or less. Mr. Leonard, you're recognized. I'm Derek McIntosh. I'll be filling right, in for Mr. Thank Leonard you. today. Uh, members of the commission, Mr. Secretary, I would like to present item number 139, parts A through double L. These are the change orders on projects which have a cumulative total of change orders of $75,000 or less. This item is presented for your information only, but I'd be glad to ask any questions or answer any questions. All right. These change orders were discussed in our in detail in our committee meetings. Uh, so if there are no questions, uh, you may uh, go ahead with item number 140. Okay. I'd like to present item number 140, parts A through double A. These are the change orders on projects which have a cumulative total of change orders greater than $75,000. Your approval is recommended, and I'd be glad to answer any questions. All right, commissioners, you've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion to approve item number 140? LaForge, move for approval. All right. Got a second? Second. Take the roll, please. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Frymiller? Mr. McCown? Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. Forge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Thank you very much. Item number 141 are the proposed bid openings. Mr. Hackney, you're recognized. Robert Hackney, Comptroller Division, Project Funding Manager. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Item 141, proposed bid openings, consists of the tentative January 2022 and the tentative February 2022 bid openings. The Department recommends approval. All right, Commissioners, you've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion to approve item number 141? So moved, Grimsley. Do you have a second? Second, Alexander. All right. Take the roll, please. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Fry Miller? Mr. McCown? Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Thank you very much. All right. Item number 142 for the awards. Mr. Dels, you're recognized to present. Anthony Dell's office engineer. Good morning, commissioners, Mr. Secretary. Item 142 are our recommendations from the September 16th bid opening. It is recommended that the following items from that bid opening referred to by call order be awarded. That's call order 700, 703, 705, 715, 720, 730, 735, 745, 750, 760, 770, 775, 780, 783, 785, 790, and 805. It is recommended that the following items from the September 16th bid opening referred to by call order be rejected. That's call order 755. It is recommended that the decision regarding either award or rejection for the following item from the September 16th bid opening referred to by call order be deferred in accordance with state statutes for a period not to exceed 90 days. And that's call order 725. This includes recommendations for award and your approval is requested. All right. Commissioners, you've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion to approve item number 142? LaForge, move for approval. Do I have a second? Crimsley seconds. All right. Roll, please. 
Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Frymiller? Mr. McCown? Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Item number 143 is the presentation of the asset uh, preservation plan. Mr. Wynn, you're recognized to present. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, my name is Daniel Wynn. I'm with Project Management Division. Uh, item 143 is the asset preservation plan. The department has completed the proposed asset preservation plan with consideration for the critical needs of Oklahoma's transportation infrastructure and the financial constraint mandated by the projected federal and state funding av availability. The work plan is balanced by district within the budgetary limitations of state, federal, state fiscal years 2022 through 2025. The encompassed projects have been defined, validated, and included in accordance with the transportation needs and priorities of the state. This item is for information only, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? All right, Mr. Wynn, you are recognized to continue with uh, item number 144, the eight-year construction plan. Thank you, sir. Item 144, the eight-year construction work plan. The department has completed the proposed eight-year construction work plan with consideration for the critical needs of Oklahoma's transportation infrastructure and the financial constraint mandated by the projected federal and state funding availability pending authorization of a new federal transportation bill. The work plan is balanced by district within the budgetary limitations of federal fiscal years 2022 through 2029. The encompassed projects have been defined, validated, and included in accordance with the transportation needs and priorities of the state. The department will ensure the long-term budgetary integrity of the plan and the con continuity of the projects through the active management of the project development and de delivery process. Commission approval of the 2022 through 2029 construction work plan is recommended. Okay, you've heard the presentation. Are there any questions? All right, do I have a motion to approve item number 144? So moved, Grimsley. Do I have a second? Second. second. All right. Take the roll, please. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Frymiller? Mr. McCown? Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Item number 145 is the director's report. Secretary Gatz, you're recognized. Thank you, commissioners. Very much appreciate your consideration this morning of the department's eight-year construction work plan. That uh, is one of our benchmark documents. Uh, it's something that helps us progress improvements out on the highway system, and it's very, very important to making sure that we are preparing our projects and following through with our projects. That's a arduous process uh, that we go through annually and it begins with funding projections uh, both at the state level and the federal level. Uh, certainly for state fiscal 2022 I want to thank the governor and the legislature. We've got a couple of uh, representatives in the room with us today and our state funding projection year to year from 21 to 22 uh, improved significantly. Uh, we had, were staring a $180 million takedown for fiscal 22 in the face. Uh, the legislature stepped up and helped us make sure that we had a uh, consistent long-term uh, investment level at the, at the uh, state funding level. And we really appreciate their consideration uh, that's where it all begins. <clears throat> the other facet, and today our construction work plan represents about 50% state funding and about 50% federal funding, so it's almost half and half. And uh, certainly that's far better off than when we did our first construction work plan in 2003 that was 100% federally funded. Uh, because we had no state revenues to, to invest in construction. Uh, so again, that's commitment over the long term from the legislature, uh, certainly from the governors, and uh, the other, other side of that is our federal funding. 
And as of right now, uh, we don't have a five-year uh, authorized highway bill as of now. Uh, we do have an extension act that was passed over the weekend by the Congress that will keep the federal program going through the end of October. Uh, we are closely monitoring those discussions. Uh, I am reasonably confident that the highway bill part of, and again, there's a lot of minutia going on in the Congress right now with uh, debt ceilings and, and uh, budgets and the uh, larger infrastructure act that our highway bills rolled up into. Uh, but I'm relatively confident that the, the transportation reauthorization uh, is, is always bipartisan. Uh, I think it's got the support uh, that's going to be necessary to eventually pass it after it, it uh, is put into the proper form. Uh, so again, I was comfortable this morning presenting the eight-year construction work plan uh, to the commission. I feel like the, pro the federal funding projections we have utilized are certainly in line uh, with what would be expected in our long-term reauthorization. Uh, but that's where it all begins. Setting those funding projections is first and foremost as we begin to consider the critical needs across the state. And, you know, really when we look at those critical needs, we consider the engineering aspect bridge condition. Uh, this eight-year construction work plan has got almost 700 bridges in it, and we've come from 1,168 structurally deficient bridges down to about 65 uh, today. Our last reporting cycle uh, at the end of December in, in 2020, uh, we had 67 bridges. That ranked the state of Oklahoma as number seven in best bridge condition in the country. Uh, that's been diligent in diligent commitment to investing in our bridge infrastructure across a long period of time. Uh, there is no instant gratification in infrastructure. You've got to be diligent. You've got to maintain that commitment. Today, we've got more than a thousand bridges out on the highway system that are 80 years old. Uh, and we're going to have to continue to be diligent in investing in bridge infrastructure uh, or we're going to find ourselves right back where we started uh, with a lot of structurally deficient bridges. Uh, it's got over a thousand miles this year of rural two-lane highway that don't have shoulders on them. Uh, those are the types of highways that we have our most severe and highest fatality rates on. And something as simple as putting a safety shoulder uh, on those highways can prevent some of those accidents from happening. So that's been a focus. Uh, the district engineers did a really good job working with each of you uh, to make sure that we prioritize those rural two-lane highways, and uh, we got some of those improvements lined up in this work plan. Pavement conditions, you know, we're really good on bridge infrastructure. Our pavement conditions are not where we want them to be. Uh, we're going to be about middle of the road, probably 28th uh, or 29th in the country in, in pavement condition. We've got work to do there. This work plan delivers improvements uh, to our pavements, and uh, we've got to keep focus on uh, our pavement conditions. And again, a lot of those projects are predicated on uh, an understanding from an engineering standpoint of what those pavement conditions are, and also uh, everything from the volumes of traffic, both truck and vehicular traffic, and considerations for the geometry of some of those highways. Uh, we have many locations that have sight distance issues and, and poor visibility. Uh, at intersections especially, we find that concerning. Uh, so again, safety is our number one priority, and the projects that are encompassed within this eight-year construction work plan, whether they be rural two-lane improvements, bridge infrastructure, urban congestion, and dealing with some of the big interchange issues we've got in Oklahoma City and Tulsa and how they operate uh, in our metropolitan areas, uh, adding capacity in some locations, uh, all is first and foremost in the interest of the safety of the traveling public that we serve. So again, I 
very much appreciate the Commission's dedication to the eight-year work plan, your consideration of this year's rebalancing efforts. Uh, I want to commend all of the ODOT staff and the district engineers that have been involved in helping put that plan together and making sure we were focused on the right improvements. And uh, again, couldn't thank you enough for your consideration and approval. Uh, we'll continue to monitor the federal conditions uh, and keep you updated uh, throughout the month of October as we go into the November Commission meeting. Uh, again, uh, I have optimism that on the highway front, uh, we'll be able to find a way forward and pass a long-term reauthorization of our highway program. Had several interim studies. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I'd pause. Any questions related to the eight-year plan? Comment real quick. I'm a very big supporter of the eight-year plan. Um, it's, I, because I believe it's the only way we're going to systematically solve uh, some of the challenges. And, and I didn't fully understand the enormity of our transportation challenges until joining the commission. But uh, as I've said before, my district borders North Texas. And, and that continued growth is spilling over. And it's starting to have an impact on uh, our road systems. You know, the, our traffic continually increases. And so I don't see any other way uh, that we're going to be able to address that unless we do it systematically. So I'm a strong supporter of the eight-year plan, and I'm hoping we can continue to have some good years ahead of us to catch up on some things we did this year. Uh, this eight-year plan rebalance is a very positive one, in my opinion. And I'm hoping we can continue that. So I just wanted to make that comment, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Rob? Had several interim studies that we have participated in and several that we're watching on the go forward. Uh, one that was of a uh, little bit of interest is the uh, Turnpike Authority. Uh, Representative Grego asked us to take a look at uh, some new interchange locations on the Indian Nations Turnpike. Uh, that affects the department because several of the locations that were discussed are interchanges with uh, parts of the highway system. Uh, we often do handshake uh, work with the Turnpike Authority when you're talking about uh, interchange type configurations and the connections to the state highway system. The turnpike uh, recognizes that we need to introduce some new access points, not just on the Indian Nation turnpike, but across the turnpike network. Uh, and really, first and foremost, that's a safety consideration. Uh, because if you might imagine, uh, when the turnpike network was originally conceived, access points were not necessarily the priority. It was to move traffic uh, between two given points and the technology of the time uh, was somewhat of a limiting factor because you were collecting a cash toll at very select locations. Well, the technology today will allow us to cost effectively expand some of those access points. Uh, so we're looking at the entire network uh, from a safety perspective. If you've got 20 miles between interchanges, and you have an accident within that 20 miles, it becomes very difficult to manage traffic uh, without introducing some new access points. So again, that's something Turnpike Authority is looking at. Uh, the interim study was timely and brought out some really good discussion, so we were happy to participate in that. Uh, another eight-year study that, or interim study that we participated in was with the eight-year construction work plan uh, with a particular focus on District 2. Uh, that gave us the opportunity to talk about kind of where we've come from over the course of the last 30 years, uh, really dating back to the late 80s and early 90s and how the department has evolved uh, and how important the construction work plan has become uh, as a management tool uh, because, again, it keeps us fiscally constrained and focused on the right types of improvements as we develop those projects. Uh, hadn't necessarily always been the case. Uh, but the other thing that, that has empowered the eight-year construction work plan is that long-term funding consistency and the resources that the legislature has brought to bear uh, to help us make improvements. So it, it's become increasingly important. It is our primary communication tool with the public. And uh, again, that interim study gave us a chance to talk a little bit about where we were and where we've come. And then another one we participated in was related to uh, part of the consideration in the new highway bill is a program called Reconnecting Communities. 
Uh, Interstate 244 on the north side of Tulsa uh, has been looked at with some interest uh, because it is representative of a barrier between uh, Tulsa and uh, the Greenwood community there. And there was some very good discussion. Uh, we got to see a lot of information about what some of the other states uh, in, in their metropolitan areas are doing to try to overcome uh, interstates as a barrier to uh, the downtown areas. The challenge that we will have uh, associated with I-244 is the magnitude and expense that a project like that uh, would take to be able to implement either a removal or a complete realignment. And we have made significant investments in the IDL uh, on all sides. The Interstate 244 uh, north leg there is uh, all but brand new. So we've got a, a very high quality transportation facility there. Uh, but the discussion still is important. Uh, we need to be attentive to uh, what the communities want to talk about, what they want to discuss. So that interim study was a good opportunity to do that. And uh, we were glad to be a part of it. Uh, and appreciate the opportunity. Coming up, we've got an advanced air mobility systems and infrastructure interim study. Uh, we're going to be paying attention to that, uh, not just the Department of Transportation, but also uh, obviously the Aeronautics Commission. Uh, but there is a tremendous amount of work, both at the policy level and the infrastructure level, uh, in the unmanned aerial system space right now. Uh, so we're looking forward to uh, some good discussion coming about there. Uh, structurally deficient county bridges is another one that we're paying attention to. Uh, as you may recall, uh, the Legislative Office of Fiscal Transparency did a review of our county improvements for roads and bridges program. Structurally deficient bridges on the county network was of particular focus. Uh, so we're looking forward to an opportunity to participate in that uh, interim study and some good discussion to come from it. Uh, state procurement practices. Uh, we're always looking for a better way to uh, work with our vendors and uh, in the delivery of the department's mission, so we're keeping an eye on that. And then there's an interim study on uh, market-based pay and pay per performance that's rolled up into some of the civil service reform discussion uh, that's led by Representative Osborne. And that's going to be extremely important to the function of state government for the future. Uh, we've got to overcome recruitment and retention challenges in our workforce. Uh, whether you're talking about our entry level uh, positions like our transportation equipment operators out in the field uh, that really represent our boots on the ground that helps us get things done, uh, or whether you're talking about our professional classes, uh, our accountants and our engineering staff, uh, that it takes really uh, high level resources to be able to help us make good decisions on all fronts. We know that our pay is not keeping pace with the markets, and we know that we're going to have to do some things differently going forward. Uh, so that interim study is, a, uh, is welcome. Uh, we're going to participate in it and uh, look forward to trying to come up with some good ideas about some things we are going to be able to do around both making some adjustments from the market standpoint and also enhancing our ability to pay our top performing employees uh, for the work that they do. So we're looking forward to that interim study. On the safety front, uh, we've got a focus this month on uh, seatbelt usage. Uh, if you read the Tulsa World this morning, uh, they've got a really good article uh, related to fatalities and some of the increases that we are seeing right now, year to uh, really date to date from 20 to 21. Uh, and we're plus 62 on fatalities. Uh, we're about 501 out on the system right now. And that's too many. One fatality is too many. Uh, those increases are and a little bit of an anomaly because our crash numbers are going down, but our fatality rates are going up. Part of that uh, can be attributed to speed. And when I say speed, I'm not talking about increasing the posting from 70 to 75. I'm talking about speed in excess of the posted speed limit. Uh, and again, the thing I'd remind the traveling public of is that those black and white signs that are posted out there that indicate the speed limit are for clear, dry conditions. Uh, 
Uh, so a lot of accidents we see happen in wet weather. A lot of uh, accidents we see happen in, in uh, other types of inclement weather. Slow down uh, whenever conditions dictate. Uh, so again, speed is, is uh, a factor. Uh, as traffic volumes have come down in Oklahoma, uh, on our highway system, we have pretty much are back to pre-COVID levels uh, of traffic volume. Uh, on most of our highway system. So, uh, you know, but as traffic volumes fell off a little bit during COVID, we saw speeds increase and we need everybody to slow down and observe the posted speed limit, uh, not just out there on the highways every day driving, uh, especially in our construction work zones. Uh, but again, our uh, safety campaign for the month of October with due consideration for the fact that we are coming into the holiday season. Uh, we're going to see some big travel days ahead of us and uh, certainly as our families gather for Thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, please encourage everybody to buckle their seatbelt. Uh, we're working on that emphasis uh, in increasing our seatbelt usage here in Oklahoma. Uh, we've got a new public service announcement that is just one way we're trying to get the word out and uh, if I might, I'd like to show that PSA right now, so. I put on my belt. Do you? I click it. Do you? I buckle it. Do you? I buckle up. Do you? No matter how you say it, join your fellow Oklahomans in buckling up each time you get behind the wheel. Brought to you by Oklahoma Transportation and the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. Good message in that PSA. And again, if you're in a accident, you are 50% more likely to be a fatality if you don't have your seatbelt buckled. Uh, so again, please buckle up, help us protect your safety out there on the highway because you, it, it, it all starts with you uh, in that driver's seat making sure that the passengers that you're carrying uh, are also buckled up. So if I might give just a brief update on modernization, uh, we continue to make progress around the transportation cabinet and our modernization efforts. A couple of unique things going on right now is we are developing a report that will be focused on the Transportation Commission and Turnpike Authority Board to make sure that you have an understanding of where we're at with modernization. Uh, so we're going to put together a little bit of level of detail. Uh, we continue to make progress around our early initiatives, uh, everything from strategic to communications to uh, really beginning to take a look at our financial areas, our human resource areas, and some of our other administrative functions to see how we can share and leverage resources uh, to be more effective, more efficient in the delivery of those services. Uh, that's going to continue. Uh, we'll expand those efforts into other areas over the course of time, uh, but we need, really need to put together a, a little bit of a more comprehensive report so the commission understands uh, what's going on. Uh, at the November meeting, uh, we will present a master services agreement uh, that begins to set the stage for our interaction between primarily the Turnpike Authority and the department uh, as we leverage resources and allocate costs across the two agencies. So. Again, look for that uh, report during the month of October uh, and for a commission item to be on the commission in November. So with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, again, thank the commission again for your consideration of the construction work plan, uh, the asset preservation plan, and everything that we do to keep our uh, highway system in as good a condition as our resources will allow. Stand for questions, sir. Any questions, guys? Maybe more of an observation than a question. I, you know, I come from the aviation field, and we're really in a golden age of safety in aviation. I mean, you know, we rarely have air carrier accidents. Deaths have been going down. And then over the last decade, we see the opposite have, happening in ground transportation. Uh, distracted driving probably is at the core, but, you know, I think it was around 2015 or so when we started to see the uptick again. After decades where we were seeing this gradual decline in highway deaths, we started seeing an uptick. And so it's going the opposite way. Uh, which is it's disheartening to see that, uh, especially given all the improvements in automobile safety, everything we're doing on the roadways. It's disappointing to see that. It really is. And I, th I think it's going to have to be a societal 
decision that we're not going to tolerate that anymore. You know, it, it's a cost to all of us. It's a cost to society and tragic, unfortunately. So, uh, just an observation more than anything else. And yeah. Commissioner, I tell you that, you know, technology is that double-edged sword because it's our friend because eventually the technology that's being introduced in the vehicles will help with accident numbers. But in that interim period where we have technology is so much of a distraction today, uh, whether you're talking about cell phones uh, or other types of uh, technologies, uh, you really have to be careful with distracted driving because we do see lots of accidents that were a result of uh, not paying attention to what's in front of you, quite frankly. Well, on behalf of the commissioners, I'd just like to say thank you to you and your team, not only for all the hard work you put into the eight-year work plan, but uh, just what you do every day to make our safe, our uh, state a safer and, uh, and better place to live. Thank, thank you. you very much. Any other questions? All right. If the commissioners have no other comments, then I'd hear a motion to for item number 146, which is adjournment. So moved, Grimsley. We have a second? Second. All right. Take the roll, please. Mr. Coburn? Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley? Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Frymiller? Mr. McCown? Mr. Dyson? Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander? Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge? LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson? Thank you. We are adjourned.